Welcome to Testing in the Pub. Welcome to another Testing in the Pub. It's uh, me and Dan here today. and We're going to talk about what makes people leave testing and what are the reasons behind what keeps people in testing. So hello Dan. How's it going, Steve? It's been a while since we've actually been on a testing in the pub together because we've done a few interviews, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, time to be out and about, isn't it? But now it's it's cold outside. It's windy. It's horrible. It's time to sit in <laughs> and uh, time to sit in the pub. I reckon. I know, and this is a, a first official Skype recording. I think. Is it? It is. It is. I think. Yes. Yes. We tried to do this before and it failed miserably. So uh, hopefully this one will work. <laughs> this one will work, Steve. <laughs> this one will work. This okay, will work, so, listeners. So, a lot of people seem to be leave, leaving the testing industry, right? And becoming, um, I don't know, dev managers or scrum masters or product management, project management, you know? So, uh, I want to know why. What's your thoughts on, on why people are leaving? I know that we have a lot of problems in our industry. Uh, is it purely frustration or...? It's, yeah, it's an interesting one, to be honest. I think it's a mixture of everything. I mean, speaking as someone who doesn't do as much testing as they used to, by any means, in, in my role at the moment, so I'm doing a delivery management role, I kind of moved because the, the, kind of the industry moved a little bit and the roles that I was interested in particularly kind of a management level for testing that just don't really exist quite so much anymore. But that's in the, that's the context in which I work compared with, I guess, the context in which other people work. So it's, I think the I think from at a management level, I think the, the role of agile methodologies and those ways of working mean that it is more about kind of cross-discipline management as it is about cross-discipline teams. And I think I also, you kind of also see with the, the rise of the use of automated checking, for example, that I think there are less testing jobs now. Or, uh, but yeah, I think there are. You think so? I'm not too sure. I think there's there's more. I think there's more exploratory testing roles. There's more companies asking for exploratory testing skills rather than just testing skills because those companies used to employ human mm-hmm. checkers, yeah. right? And now they're employing skilled testers, right? And there's a realisation coming around. But uh, uh, um, possibly that would force people to shift roles slightly towards automation, right? Um, because the companies are still looking for that checking to happen, but in an automated way. But I can see what you're saying about management. Like, um, for me... If, uh, it makes sense to have a team manager to people manage, but you'll always need that process management mm-hmm. sort of side of things as well. So, um, how 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 are you handling that now that you're kind of like a delivery manager? Uh, I, well, I, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's about having the right mixture of people in your teams. So, if you've got a strong team and you've got, say, a tech tech lead in there who's got some good coaching skills, and you've got some good testers in there. That can coach, or if you can coach yourself, uh, then it kind of covers those gaps off much more effectively. I and mean, uh, we we had a test coach role for a while, uh, where I'm working at the moment, and and that also worked very effectively. I mean, that was actually me, uh, so uh, and that that worked that worked pretty effectively because we managed to just then kind of cover that that coaching aspect off, and you had somebody in there who really had that kind of discipline knowledge. Yeah. Do you think coaching is another reason why people leave the testing industry? Because I, I know that there is a lot of test coach roles, but I know that companies might see coaching as a sort of overarching thing that covers not just testing, but agile and possibly development as well, things like that. So do you feel more people are moving out of testing specifically to move into a more sort of multi-disciplined coaching role? I think we've seen a kind of rise of coaching roles, that's for sure. But uh, whether they're more... They're, I mean, there are more agile coaches, ultimately. But I think I've seen some testers move into agile coach roles as well. And I, I think that's that's often because the skill set you have as a tester and that's that ability to kind of 
essentially, I see it as almost as kind of like gluing the team together and bringing that kind of voice of the customer into the team. I think that you, you one finds oneself getting quite interested in process and, and kind of how the team can work. And I think most commonly that you, those roles are agile coaching roles. I've seen a few test coach roles, but I, w- I wouldn't say that's particularly common at the moment. I know a few people doing that sort of role, but I, I've, I've yet to see, for example, a, a job uh, advertised for test coach. Yeah, unless it's kind of like a consultant sort of, uh, we need help with advancing to testing with a new company, so we're going to hire a consultant, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. But then again, that consultant would also be, um, well, could also apply the coaching skills with the. Uh, with Agile as well, right? It's, it's interesting because um, personally, like, uh, I love coaching people. I love uh, uh, sh- knowledge sharing and, and learning as well, you know. And, um, but what I'm finding more is that I'm, I'm stretching more into the Agile community, not moving away from testing, you know, um, but just expanding out into other other communities as well outside of testing just because I guess because it's the frustration side where I'm having to deal with people that just don't know what testing is and have misconceptions or misunderstandings and I want to teach them a little bit about what testing is as well um, but the frustration side is interesting because I've se- I have seen testers leave the testing industry because of the frustrations of people not understanding what testing is you know yeah, I think I think there is quite a bit of that, and I think as many as as much as people can kind of stand up and and dispel those misconceptions and talk about it, which is extremely important to do. Uh, even that's, that's, let's not say it's not. It is. It's extremely important to keep saying that because there are so many people who have those misconceptions. But people, it can get to a point where people feel like they're banging their head against a wall, especially if they're they're ambitious, they're talented. And they, and they want a career, a good career. I, I think some of those people do tend to then get out, and they do tend to move into, say, agile coaching roles, for example, or, or even in, into into management roles. I mean, I think that's that's, that's this one area where may, maybe there is, I guess, a bit. You could say a glass ceiling, perhaps. You can rise to a kind of certain sort of level in testing, and I think if you want to stay in testing, it seems that you you get to that point, and then you become a consultant. Or you, you go you go independent. I've seen people do that too. Yeah, that's true. So, what keeps it interesting? Like, I, I know personally for me, I, I don't want to leave. I've I've got no strive to leave testing, leave the testing industry. But for me, that's because of the community, really, right? Um, and and I, I'm really enjoying my work at the moment. I'm really enjoying my job because I'm getting this element of coaching and managing and hands-on like testing um, and I'm getting to work so, with some really good people but at the end of the day it's the community that that really really makes me enjoy my career you know you know what I'm talking about oh yeah yeah I know I, I absolutely do uh, it's but th- but then I guess it kind of comes around to the what if you're what if you either a haven't found the community or, or B, for some reason you haven't found it kind of ticks the boxes for what you want or what you think you want. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because if you look at it otherwise, yeah, I mean, somebody who hasn't, somebody, there are so many people, when you think about it, you think about the testing community, it is actually relatively small. It's extremely active, which is great, but it's a, it's a, it's a tiny, tiny subset of the number of testers in the world, for example. And... Or even the number of testers in, say, Western Europe or in the in the States, and and it's and it is quite kind of biased towards particular countries as well. A lot of a lot of Brits, a lot of people from the US, a lot a lot of a lot of people from the Netherlands, for example. Um, <laughs> and that's good. I, I always I always find it I always find it quite funny the, the number of testers and the number of particularly the number of testers that I know from the Netherlands is disproportionately high. In fact, I think I only know one other person from the Netherlands who isn't a tester. So. <laughs> Where was I? I've completely lost my train of thought now. You were uh, talking about how uh, some so, people may not get stuff from the community enough to, yes. to f- find value from it, I guess. Right? Yeah, yeah. So the reality is there's a huge number of testers out there who, 
for one reason or another aren't hooked into the community and I'm sure and some of those are probably very motivated by what they do but some of some of them maybe are not and are those the sort of people who get out of testing as well do they work in a company where that sort of perception is very much that testing is kind of a foot on the ladder to something else for example which I think is another reason why so many people get out of testing is you kind of you so many people fall into it and then there's this perception in in quite a lot of companies that you do your you almost find your feet in the company in testing and then when you've done that you you move on to a proper job for want of a better way of putting it if i think about how i've learned what i know about testing right majority of it's through the the community right yes you learn about like domain knowledge and stuff from companies but actually the 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 theory side of testing and the putting it into practice and learning from other people's experiences is all through a community you know so if 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 i hadn't have found the community would I be in the state of mind where I want to get out of testing if I hadn't learned what I've learned so far, do you know? I guess it would be really difficult, right? Mm, yeah. I feel as if we're, I'm, I'm unintentionally turning this conversation towards how to promote the community more so that we can keep it, keep people interested in the industry, but, <laughs> <laughs> but <clears throat> do you know what I mean though? Well, I guess that's one way of looking at it, isn't it? The, the, the test community is one thing yeah. that keeps people interested, but what, what else keeps people interested? What else could, keeps people uh, wanting to grow in their in their roles? Because ultimately, if somebody if somebody has a passion for what they do, they want to grow in that role, and there's space to grow within that role, um, um, then the chances are that they will stay within that. If there isn't for some reason, if they feel that they're constricted, they're pigeonholed by by something, whether it's company process or perception or what have you that's when they look at what are the what are my next steps are my next steps go to another company and do something do what i do now but maybe in a different domain or are my is my next option actually go and do something totally different yeah so what else keeps people or will keep people within testing so the community is obviously one thing which is it's absolutely awesome and will keep them in testing but what what else will maybe there's a little maybe that that mindset shift and and how, and, and how do you get organisations to want to take testing seriously is is another thing if you don't feel like your role is being taken seriously why the hell would you want to carry on doing it yeah but i think it's it's more a case of if you don't take your role seriously right because i i mean i've worked in companies where they've not taken testing seriously but i have and I've still got a lot out of it, you know. And the company's actually got a lot out of my angle on on things and perspective on things, right? Mm-hmm. It's a difficult question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, this isn't supposed to be easy, Daniel. <laughs> uh, no, the uh, I, I, I think for me, maybe that there is a whole thing about ch- kind of changing organisational perceptions towards testing. I think that's that, that's that's a very big thing, I and mean, I think certainly that comes that round very much to value. So that kind of quality is value to someone, value to someone who matters. But if it's it's about how you can actually sell testing and you, how you can you can sell that value that's really important to me. Because I've I've kind of as a general rule, and this is a massive generalization, but testers are not normally very good at actually quantifying the value that they bring. Yeah. But then they get extremely frustrated when, as a result of not being able to quantify that value, people don't take them seriously. And and being able to quantify that value, I think, is is a really, really important step, ultimately. And being able to do that in a contextual way. So not saying, oh, I tested it and I found I found 100 bugs, and expecting people to go, oh, that's really good, well done you. You must be really a really awesome tester. But actually thinking, well... What does that 100 bugs actually mean? If I'm the, I don't know, if I'm the CIO, for example, I don't really care about your 100 bugs. I care about what's the impact of my bottom line. Is this gonna, is there some issue here that's gonna affect my share price? Can you talk to me in the sort of language that I understand? So it's it's, it's that it's about, about being able to kind of contextualise that that message ultimately, and being able to concisely and and accurately explain what your value is. Yeah. But I guess that's a, 
is that a self explanation to yourself, or is it a case of um, trying to justify that to other people? Because e- even if you're if you're trying to justify it to yourself, then the best way to do that is like how much fun do you have? How much fun do you have at work? Yeah, no, that is a really good point, and that that is always yeah. You spend so much of your your adult life working, then if it's not fun, then why why the heck are you doing it? <laughs> <laughs> Go and do something else. Go and do something that is fun. Yeah. So maybe there's another question there, which is why is so why are people in testing not finding testing fun? Is it because they're doing what we might call checking as a as a tester? If you're just doing that checking, are you actually have you got the opportunity to grow? Have you got the opportunity to be creative? Are you actually getting do you feel valued and valuable ultimately? Probably not. So maybe then it, again it comes around to how you do your testing. So and how your organisation allows you to do that testing. If it if you if you can only tick boxes, you're going to get bored. If you're bored, it's not going to be very much fun. If it's not very much fun, then I'd recommend that you go and find somewhere else. <laughs> so, what about people being forced out then, right? Because we've spoke about people that possibly are frustrated and, and move on with like misconceptions and stuff. Um, what about people that are forced out? That's a good point. Is so kind of like a. I don't know, they're excluded in the community for some reason, I don't know, give us another example of how someone could be forced out uh, Well here's a, here's a good uh, there was an example on the testers the tester IO Slack channel yesterday there was, so I could I, my, my, man, my manager said that because we, we've gone over to Agile then the devs can do all the automation and we don't need any testers anymore ah, Yeah, that's probably a good example of yep. being forced out So uh, that's a good example and I'm, I'm yeah, that, that, that kind of goes on and that kind of happens. But again, I kind of look at that and I think, well, why would that manager think that that testing wasn't, why that testing wasn't valuable? So it may be that the, the, they were just an idiot or it may be that that kind of conversation about value and how that value has been quantified wasn't correct. I don't know the context there, so I'm not going to speculate on the reasoning behind it, but it's, it's very much definitely the that whole idea of actually we don't need as many testers because again do people want want to stay in a role where they feel that their job's at risk probably not as humans we do naturally kind of fear change and we do want stability so I guess to kind of sum up then Dan I mean what would you say are the the activities or the things you can do if you're say I was a tester and I'm sitting at at my desk and I and I probably didn't even want to come into work because I was bored or annoyed or whatever don't like my job. What, what are the things I should do? Okay, so we spoke about the community, right? Uh, I, I, I honestly find the, the, the testing community so valuable. So uh, if, if you're not involved in the community, get involved. I mean, there's loads of meetups. There's, uh, there's Slack channels. There's Skype groups. Uh, weekend testing. There's lots of stuff that just have a google for testing community there's lots of stuff that you could do to to even just talk about testing and talk about why you're you're frustrated or what problems you have in the testing industry and then people people love to help yeah yeah i mean i think yeah if, if you're you you want to be asking yourself well uh, if you're if you're feeling like you want to get out of testing is it you really want to get out of testing or is it that maybe you want to change company for example so uh, don't think that te- the testing where you work is test is like testing everywhere some people will say that some people will, will just leave a ro- leave leave an entire industry because they don't like their role whereas what they, what they need to kind of realize particularly if you've been doing it for a while is that how you do testing isn't how every other company does testing and then do your research and find a company that does testing or is known for doing testing better and has a group of testers that maybe you admire and you you think I want to work with and that's kind of key yeah it's true because if you can do that if you can kind of quantify that value and then think about think about why why I want to be there then you're you're going to have a much more fulfilling role ultimately and then also think if you if you think your if you think your company doesn't value testing think about why so think about is it is it because they they don't see it as important. If they don't see it as important, think about why they don't see it as important and try and think about how you can actually work with them to effectively quantify you and to explain your value. 
and think about how that message needs to be dependent on who you're talking to. So if you're talking to another tester, it's going to be a very different message to if you're talking to a development manager, for example, or even a CIO, CTO, CTO or the owner of the company. They're interested in very different things. So I'd say before you decide to either get out of testing or get out of your company, have a go at yep. improving the perception of testing within the company. I agree. Good points. Sometimes the grass is the grass always appears greener on the other side. It isn't always. So uh, think think about that too. And also, also remember, if you if you if you get out of testing, you you you, you can come back. So <laughs> it's not a closed shop. It's not a it's not a one way it's not a one way gate. Sometimes people go off and they do other stuff, and then they decide to come back, and that's cool. It depends how broken broken hearts are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break the hearts of people in testing, listeners, please. <laughs> <laughs> that was a feeble plea, Steve. <laughs> it was awful, frankly, wasn't it? Yeah. I did mean it. <laughs> <laughs> Good chat. Good topic. Yes, yes. It's like, yes. Yeah, it's an important topic, I think. It is, and I think also if, if anyone's listening and they and they either are thinking of getting out of testing, or indeed if they have got out of testing, drop us a line. We'd, be, we'd love to chat to you a bit more and kind of explain, uh, understand your your the reasons why you got out of testing, or why you're thinking of getting out of testing. So yeah, if you are interested, then we are testinginthepub.co.uk, uh, or testinginthepub.com, or at testinginthepub on Twitter as well. We're on YouTube so, now yeah. as well, right? Oh, we're on YouTube with the Testing in the Pub channel as well. So if you just search Testing in the Pub, Google unsurprisingly puts the YouTube stuff up the top. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, great great talking to you again, Dan. And uh, we will be back very, very soon for another episode of Testing in the Pub. Nice. Nice. Goodbye. See ya.